You, as a real estate professional, an investor, developer, single family homeowner, you need to understand how short-term rentals works, the mechanics and the dynamics. And even more importantly, you also need to know how rental arbitrage works. Even if you have intentions of doing neither, you need to know them. It's part of a permanent playbook, you could say, in real estate. And you need to be aware of everything that's going on. In this video, I'm gonna tell you why you need to know these things and what you can do with this knowledge. Let's jump in. Airbnb family, welcome back. So as you all know, rental arbitrage is my specialty, but rental arbitrage relies on short-term rentals. Um, it's how I make all of my money, and I have friends who make their money in various ways. They, they buy and hold real estate, they do fix and flips, they do forced appreciation so they can get a ton of money back out of a refi. There's a lot of ways you can make money in real estate. So my way is not the only path, it's not the path, but I just tend to like it. But I've noticed a trend with the way things have been going with the economy, you know, with COVID, um, with the fear of a drawdown in the housing market, that the real estate market may crash in 2021. Um, there's been a trend towards de-risking and diversifying and all sorts of different things. Um, and the building that I'm in right now, the one I live in, um, I didn't get nearly as good of a deal, but they did a ton of tours today where they're giving away 10 weeks of rent for free to move into this property. And I got an email from another building I'm negotiating with. They sent me an offer as a regular resident, not even as a professional like me, but anybody can have four months free at their property. These are insane discounts. So this is pointing towards um, the near future in real estate. Uh, apartment locators know the drill. When a, when a building can't get full, like a big apartment complex like this, they go put out lease concession specials where they do a month or two months for free. But 10 weeks or four months of rent for free, that's pretty dire, that's pretty aggressive. They also pay real estate agents commission for that. So a real estate agent might get 200% of rent as a commission on top of a like a tenant getting four months of rent for free. So they're giving away half of the rent for the whole year in order to get the place full. And so this is a supply and demand thing. And if you're holding on a property or you plan on buying property, investing in property, and you are competing for tenants the same way every other building is competing for tenants, you need to know that there are multiple options here for how you can get your mortgage or your bank note paid. That's the whole real point of this. And that's where short-term rentals and rental arbitrage comes in. For those of you who are owners and want to invest, you need to understand how short-term rentals works because you may want to do it yourself or find a rental arbitrage partner. That's what we like to call ourselves when we make a pitch to a building. Those of you who want to take advantage of what will be a deflation in the rental market and the softening of the rental market in various cities across the world, um, you can take advantage of the fact that landlords need tenants and you can broker these agreements. And of course, you want to educate them on how short-term rentals works. And of course, you need to know how much money you can make in rental arbitrage on the other side of the deal because of course, you're taking a risk by taking a lease from a landlord and you're going to try to make more money on it essentially is how rental arbitrage works so first let's talk about short-term rentals really what is it what isn't it first what it isn't short-term rentals is not a new concept now you can see hotels very clearly take advantage of the short-term rental market somebody needs a place to stay they'll stay for a night or a week or a month or multiple in a hotel some hotels have the business model of making a extended stay hotel, like the Value Place Inn or Extended Stay Suites. And these places offer a little kitchenette as well. But it goes beyond that too. Student housing is short-term rentals. The boarding houses, ever since the birth of this country in the 1600s, 1700s, people, when they're new to a, like a mining town in California, they would stay at a boarding house or they would stay at a place that was kind of like a hotel, but also a tavern at the same time. And people would live multiple months, places like that. So to offer someone a furnished home with all the things that they need to live there, like fluently or immediately, is something that's been around for a long time. There are people who do believe that with work remote being a thing, it's easier to vacation anywhere in the world you want to vacation and also keep your job and actually still be full-time employed at the time that you're somewhere like Bali or Thailand or Colombia, anywhere that you want to be. You can just take your laptop, go, and still show up to work through your laptop. So there is a belief that short-term rentals or furnished apartments or modular living is gonna be something that people gravitate towards anyway because they're going to abandon their permanent residence and live a life on the road. Um, work remote has been a big thing already prior to COVID. You know, digital nomad is a hashtag you'll see prior to COVID. And COVID is only pushing us further in that direction. So if you're going to be losing tenants to the fact that they don't want to commit to one apartment that they're stuck in and would much rather have modular living, then your apartment complex might be able to take advantage of that move just the same, which we will talk about here in the future. But the point here is, is short-term rentals is not new, 
It's just made sexy and dynamic by the names like Airbnb or Expedia, Booking.com, adding, or HomeAway and VRBO, adding homes, and Marriott actually getting into the home share market as well. This has brought it to the front, it's brought it to your attention, and that's why you're probably watching these videos because you know about short-term rentals, but you wanna know more. So even though it's not new, it is fancy right now, it's a hot topic, Airbnb is about to file for their IPO, and with that, eyes are on Airbnb and of course the space of home share, and everybody wants a piece of that pie. So simply what short-term rentals is, is you take an accommodation that somebody could live there longer, but you choose to make that home available by the night, by the week, by the month. Corporate housing companies do this all the time as well. They'll go to a business and Apple or Google or um, the local electric company or MD Anderson Hotels, like right over here or Baylor Medicine. What they'll do is they'll say, hey, we have to place a ton of nurses or a ton of contractors in Dallas for four months um, for temporary work and we need a place to put them. A corporate housing company would go to an apartment like this and say, hi, um, I have the need for 12 apartments, uh, four month leases, please. So instead of one or two, like one or two apartments for a year, they're taking 12 to 20 apartments for four months at a time. And apartment complexes say yes to this all of the time. They charge a little bit more in rent, like 300 or $400 more in rent per month for a shorter lease, and they give away 12 units. And at the end of the day, a building is happy with something like this because they want their, their cash in on the property as high as possible. And if they're at 80% occupancy, but for four months they can get up to 96% occupancy because they gave them all away for four months, then they can make a bunch of money on those and they can better handle the fact that people are moving out of buildings every month. There's an attrition of non-lease renewals, so getting up to 96% occupancy for four months and jamming their business full of cash and just better managing the leases that are moving out, that's great for a building. They'll take that deal almost any day of the week. <clears throat> but now you can intentionally sign year-long or multi-year leases to do something similar to corporate housing, but you don't instead find your customer first. You instead are going to advertise the property when, once it's furnished. And I actually teach my students in my negotiations, my, my closers crash course, which is how I teach people to like talk landlords into this business model. The one thing that we discuss is that this is very similar to corporate housing, but instead of finding customers first, we actually furnish the home first and make it marketable, and then we find our, our guests or our tenants. Um, and so I do have a very specific script for that, for those of you who want to get into rental arbitrage. Um, stay tuned. Now, for those of you just better understanding short-term rentals, it's very just clearly the, the fact that you are taking something that could be a yearly rental, and instead of you finding a yearly tenant, you are putting people willingly for a day or two or a week or 10 at a time. This creates an increased risk because you have tenant turnover all of the time. That's the perceived risk. But if you run a short-term rental well, or even just, just average, you'll find that you'll stay 80, maybe even 90% occupied city to city. And that's if you do all the things right. And this channel talks all about dynamic pricing and taking the proper photos. There's a lot to know to running the short-term rental, but what you do need to know is if you get into short-term rentals with your long-term rental, um, you're not gonna get crushed. Um, you're not gonna have the same type of issue with tenant turnover. If you're a landlord, you know that sometimes when a, when a tenant moves out two years after like they started their lease, you show up in the place that the cabinets are broken and the, the bathroom needs to get repaired and there's a bunch of remodel expenses and then you need to get that fixed so then when you can show the home and try to find a new tenant that wants to live there and that process might take a while and you might have to pay a real estate agent a commission to put the home in so you might lose two Sometimes three months, God forbid, of rent before you get money in ca like positive cash from a new tenant. If it takes you more than three months of lost rent in equivalence in order to find a new tenant, you're, you're getting your tail kicked by only collecting rent eight months out of the year. You don't want that. Now I can promise you that in almost every scenario that I've seen, putting a long-term rental on the short-term rental market, um, yeah, you might go a day or two without a tenant here or there, but if you do things right, you stay over 80% occupied, and you're doing it at a markup, more than you would normally charge for rent. You can charge double or triple of what your daily rent rate would be. So for example, um, one of my newest properties in Philadelphia, I've got these two bedrooms and then the three bedroom. It's a three unit building. And the, the I actually just did a previous video on this very recently. My rent is 1800 a month, and I am easily getting more than $100 a night, like $125 a night for that unit currently. And it is the winter in Philadelphia. This is not the time that you know we expect to jam the best money. We're gonna do the best in the summer. And with COVID and air, like Philadelphia having a partial lockdown, 
A little over $100 a night is probably good right now, but uh, we're paying $1,800 in rent and we're collecting $3,300, $3,400, $3,500 in, in like monies. And so we're actually collecting more than $1,000, sometimes even more than $2,000 a month in rent for a place like that. Short-term rentals is not something to be afraid of. It is simply a tool. This is really the heart of what I want to get to here for those of you who are landlords. Short-term rentals is just another strategy for getting your property full and getting your mortgage paid. You are used to long-term tenants. You are used to that like the check every month kind of lifestyle and it can be pretty well passive if you hire a property management company but on the other side um, short-term rentals just has a different operating standard it has a different flow it's a little bit more complex you know and you have to have furniture in there and you have to pay the utilities yourself but you're charging double or triple per night and if you hire a property manager or short-term rental professional to run your property you will net more money than you would with a regular tenant and it can be just as passive because somebody else is doing all the active stuff. So that is what you stand to gain in a market where you may not be able to get a long-term tenant. You might be able to just put it on the short-term rental market and make as much or more money than if you were fighting for long-term tenants all the time. There are landlords out there that start in short-term rentals and they never look back. They just love it. They're like, you know what? I don't want to deal with a lease ever again. I don't want to deal with an eviction ever again. I don't want to deal with a trashy um, tenant that broke everything. And to my surprise, I walk in two years later and have $8,000 of remodel cost. Never again do I have to deal with anything like that. I have a guest stay for two nights, stay for 10 days. At worst, they're really messy and the housekeeping team takes care of it. And sometimes there's some repairs. But what's really cool about this too is you get more access to the property. You can go in every couple of days. You can go in every 10 days and make sure that everything's in good order. That means if you, something needs to get repaired, it can get repaired immediately. You don't have to delay. These are really good points as to why short-term rental is a viable strategy for maintaining your home or keeping a good positive upkeep in your home. If you ever think about selling the property in the near future, you'll know that it's in a great condition. And touring the property is not gonna be something you're gonna cringe at or your real estate agent is going to dread because the bathroom has been needing like a remodel for the last two and a half years and you, you know, the tenant won't like cooperate with you. You never have to deal with that. That's awesome. So now those of you who are looking to do rental arbitrage, this is, this is where the power is. I hope you were taking notes the first half of this video because the things that I just talked about are the things that you would talk about with a landlord. You're gonna, you can talk about how the world is moving towards modular living and the short-term rental market is becoming more in vogue and it's more popular now and people want to get involved and people like the idea and that landlords can have access to the property way more frequently and that way your tenants don't have leases and there's no evictions. All of these things are standard uh, pitch points that we teach in our scripts in our course. And these are things that you can go to a landlord and you can just dazzle them with all the cool positive like aspects of a short-term rental. And you have to take over the property and actively manage it every single day. You're going to be talking to guests. You're going to be answering questions, helping them find cool local restaurants to eat at. You might even have this all in like a welcome packet and you're going to do all of this stuff and you're going to charge more money. You're going to pretty much offset all of your costs for housekeeping, internet, cleaning supplies, stuff that they'll use when they're there, like toilet paper, shampoo, um, and the rent that you pay the landlord. And you're going to manage your prices and take advantage of days that have high demand and then sell off the days that have low demand at a lower price and you're going to get dynamic. And at the end of each month, you're going to keep some money. And what I've noticed is we make about $800 per month in profit per bedroom. So if you pick up a three bedroom house, you're, you're aiming to make more than $2,000 a month in profit net, even after paying the landlord is cut. Um, if you pick up a studio or a one bedroom, you want to make at least $800 a month net after you pay the landlord his cut. So this is how rental arbitrage works is when you jam in say $1,500 in rent plus $250 in like utilities and stuff and say um, like $50 a month in other weird supplies replacing things and say $300 a month of housekeeping costs, you're looking at maybe $2,100 a month in total costs for this $1,500 apartment housekeeping and everything all in. And, but then if you charge three grand at the end of the month, that $900 is yours. And it's actually not even at the end of the month because you get paid daily with Airbnb. So like you get that money today and you can reinvest that money to grow. And I've done videos on that as well. So rental arbitrage, you're taking a risk by signing a year long lease. That is the risk of rental arbitrage is you are on the hook for a lease. It's like a loan. It's probably like the most unregulated loan ever to exist because a landlord could look at you and go, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to loan you my property and you're going to make monthly payments on that property. There's no regulation. There's no Fannie Mae. There's no credit score required. Um, 
usually. Um, they just want to make sure you haven't been previously evicted and you make some money. And, but with that same amount of money, you can lease a thousand apartments. You can find a thousand landlords that all will look at you separately and choose to do a one-on-one -on -one relationship with you. Even if you make less than $100,000 a year, right? You make like $80,000 a year. You could lease 1,000 apartments in real time at the same time with that same 80,000 because all of your applications are separate. It's super unregulated because it doesn't go on your credit score. There's no debt to income. Like, it, well, it doesn't affect your debt to income because it's not shown as debt. Your 1,000 leases doesn't show up on your credit score like, oh, this person has to pay like, like $15,000 a month in rent. Like, or this person doesn't, has to pay like a million dollars a month in rent. It doesn't show up on your credit score. And so that's the power of growth with rental arbitrage is you can find a bunch of different landlords that see the value of everything we've talked about in this video about like taking a part of their portfolio and shifting it away from long-term rentals. So just in case it hits the fan, just in case the bottom falls out and the rental market gets more and more soft, some of those leases are protected because you as a professional are finding a different type of tenant for that landlord. Now with rental arbitrage, there's a couple different ways you can do agreements with landlords. You can either pay them the rent outright, which is how I like to do it so I get to keep 100% of my upside. Otherwise, you can risk manage and say the landlord um, gives you 25% of the revenue and then the landlord keeps the other 75%. What's cool about this is if you don't collect much more than the rent, you still make 25% and the landlord will actually come out with a slight net loss compared to somebody like paying rent perfectly every month. But now this landlord doesn't have to worry about the cost of evicting a guest and a guest just not paying rent at all when the eviction process starts. There's that downside. When you do a, like what's called a co-host agreement with a landlord where you take 25% and they take 75%, even if there was a couple months where you don't perform as well as you should have, and the landlord would be sore at you because they made $300 less that month than they would have with a regular tenant. If you go three months where they make a few hundred dollars less than normal, that's still way cheaper than a tenant defaulting on their lease, not paying any rent for multiple months and then having to get evicted because the court costs for that are super high. So I think a landlord can see the benefits of the risk on the back end because they don't have to give you a lease. You don't occupy it. So if they ever don't want to do rental arbitrage with you anymore, they can just cut you and like let you go. Then they don't have to worry about evicting you. So it's actually super safe in that way because you are not the tenant. You're just a co-manager of their property and nobody that you move in to that short-term rental really ever becomes tenants unless you give them multi-month leases. But people who pay $4,000 or $5,000 a month per month for a place are much less likely to default and get evicted than somebody who pays like say $1,500 a month. This is the bird's eye. This is what it looks like top down. It's a great space. Um, it's a great way to make money. And um, it's a great partnership for landlords um, who want to take advantage of a different type of tenant. And you, you do it yourself landlords. I encourage you to give it a shot if you ever find yourself like like anxious about the rental market. If you are afraid that you're going to be losing tenants because people aren't looking to commit to like year long leases right now because things are kind of sketchy, you can take advantage of the fact that people need a modular place and put it on the short term rental market. Um, you can even rent your furniture. If you don't want to go out and buy furniture, you can rent it from like court or something like that. Try it out. Um, if you have questions, I do have a link down below where you can talk to me directly. If you, any of you developers actually want to talk more specifically about your property and how to make it a short term rental, um, that's what I do. So um, find that link in the description. If you have any other questions for me, anything easy um, or anything fun, put it in the comments and I'll be down in there like, chatting it up with you guys. So thank you as always for watching this video and I'll see you on the other side.